Hey crafters, what's up? Today I'm showing you how to create your very own super trendy layered charm necklace. Now these charm necklaces, they're popping up everywhere on Instagram, on Pinterest, they're all over every celebrity. These are great because it really allows you to play up that bohemian style, mix metals, go all out, make a super cool unique piece just for yourself. So what you're going to want to do is start out by laying out all your materials here. Just keep everything nice and neat. So we're going to start off by laying out our chain. Now I have a lot of different kind of fancy chains here, as well as some just more basic oval chain and curb chain. These fancy chains, you can't really buy them at like a craft store, so you can look for these on Etsy that have so many cool different types. If you have like skin allergies or anything like that, I suggest either gold plated or gold filled chain instead of just like a brass or um, an alloy chain. Then you're going to want to choose your charms here. I love this part because you can really get creative by mixing up finishes, different types of metals, different kinds of icons. The trendiest ones that we're seeing right now are coins, so like these little hammered coins here, and then also lockets. Um, those are cool because they add like a vintage inspired look to your piece. Um, I always like the bohemian type icons like the staples like the Hamza and the celestial icon. Celestial are also very trendy right now, but again, feel free to pick out charms that suit your tastes. Um, you can also add any sort of like beads or crystals to your necklaces if you want to. You don't have to. We're seeing a lot of just plain metal ones, but I thought why not add in a little bit of sparkle. You're going to need lobster clasps. Another trend that we're seeing is like these pave decorative lobster clasps. I got this one on Etsy. These are really cool to add to mix with your metal charms as well. You don't have to. You can just use the basic ones, but... Um, Using this lobster clasp as sort of like a focal element definitely is like an update on the usual charm necklace. Then you're going to need a lot of jump rings just for your chain. You're going to need eye pins if you want to add beads or you can also use like thin um, gauge wire, 24 gauge wire if you want to add beads as well. And then of course like always we're going to need our tools, we're going to need the flat nose pliers, round nose pliers, and wire cutters. So once you've laid out all of your materials, I really suggest that you start laying out the orientation of your necklace on a flat surface just so that you know exactly your game plan and how you're going to cut your chain. So I'm making sort of four layers here to my necklace. You can do any sort of amount of layers you want. I wouldn't suggest really going any more than four because the chains tend to get a little tangled if you've got so much going on. But you're going to want to do like a long layer, some mid layers, and then a choker length layer. The choker lengths are typically like 14, 15, 16 inches um, depending on you know the size of your neck. I would really suggest that you cut some chains and measure yourself before you um, do this tutorial. The mid lengths are probably around 17, 18 inches and then the longer ones can get up to like 20, 22, 24. Um, really again measure on yourself to make sure that you're getting the exact length that you want. So for my longest length, I'm doing this um, vintage inspired locket with like sort of that vintage type chain here. For my mid links, I'm doing um, a larger oval chain here with like that celestial charm and the crystal lobster clasp as a focal here. I'm doing a little shark tooth and then I'm going to add really small crystals to this dainty oval chain just to sort of bring in that sparkle from the lobster clasp here. And then finally for my choker length, I'm doing some oval chain and then the really dainty charm um, coin. So it's really cool to mix sort of styles here. I've got a coin, I've got a shark tooth, a celestial charm, and a locket. That sort of mixed media eclectic feel is definitely very on trend. So as you can see, I'm going to need like extra chain to fill in the links here, but I'm just sort of laying out an overall game plan for my necklace. So for my shortest choker length here, I've just cut a piece of 14 inch chain and then I'm going to take a small 4 millimeter jump ring. I'm just going to open it and then I'm going to attach that little charm to the very center of the chain with the jump ring. And then just close it on the other side. When we open and close jump rings, we always twist, we never pull like that. So it's connected to the center just like this. And then on the ends, I'm going to add just two more jump rings, one on each side, because we're going to use these ends and connect everything together when we finish making all of the layers of our necklace. So just like this on each side. And then go ahead and set this layer aside and we'll continue to do the other layers. For my next layer, I've got um, different lengths of chain here because I'm going to need to add in these little tiny crystals in between these lengths of chain. So I've got two lengths here, the longest ones that are each four and a half inches, 
and then I've got six pieces um, that are approximately one inch, a little bit less than one inch. But when you add up like everything together, this should be about 15 inches or a little bit longer than 15 inches, which is great because it'll hang right underneath our 14 inch layer. So if you've got your small crystal here, a great way to just add them onto the chain is by using small clippings of this wire. And then you're going to want to create a wrapped loop with your round nose pliers. Here's an example of one of the really dainty wrapped links that we've made. So what you want to make sure you do is catch the bottom links of chain in each wire wrap before wrapping the loop all the way closed. And then of course cut the excess wire off and bend it flush with your flat nose pliers to complete your link. Alright, so everything has been connected with your wrapped loops here. Go ahead and set this layer aside and we will start working on the medium length layer. So to create that second to last layer, I'm going for more of like a lariat style look. So I've got my two pieces of nine and a half inch chain. Now I've measured this up against my other links, my other layers, and made sure that it's going to fall in the same place that I want it to fall. So this is going to be a little bit longer than the other two pieces. Then I have a short little about one inch piece of chain here for our faux lariat. Then I've got the lobster glass with the crystals, my charm, and then a 10 millimeter jump ring and a six millimeter jump ring. So I'm going to set these aside. Um, grab my 10 millimeter jump ring, just open it up like this, insert the bottom links of that oval chain just like this, insert in the lobster clasp, then use my other pliers to twist to close. So this guy's already nice and secure on here like that. Then we're going to take this short little piece of chain, we're just going to open up that lobster clasp and just really simply insert it into the lobster clasp. This creates that full lariat. Take your smaller jump ring right here, your charm, insert the charm loop into the jump ring, just like this, and then just simply place it on that bottom link, just like that, and twist to close. So this layer was super, super easy to make, as you can see, but I think it'll be really cool because of that faux lariat effect. So set this aside, and then I'm going to make the last layer of our necklace, and we'll connect everything together. So to make the last and longest layer of your necklace, you're just going to need some chain and your charm. So cut your chain, make sure it's as long as you need it. Mine's about 25 inches. Again, measure it depending on the other lengths that you've got going on in your other layers. Um, if your locket doesn't already have some sort of nice bail at the top or something, I would add one just to make sure it has a nice finished look. So simply just string on your chain through that bail at top, and this layer is already finished. So set this aside and we'll gather all of the layers up and collect them into one cohesive piece. Alright, to finally finish off your necklace, you're just going to need to connect all of the chains on each side together. So if you haven't already, make sure that you've added a small jump ring to the end of each chain. Take a larger 8mm jump ring and then just thread on each end jump ring in order from shortest to longest. Make sure that nothing's twisted so that they're all connected into one piece right here. Take your other pair of pliers and then just simply close it. You'll have one jump ring there. Take a smaller 4mm jump ring. and This is one we're just going to add it to that 8mm. And then slide on your lobster claw. And then again, just close it up like this. So they're all going to be connected on one side for you. I'm going to repeat connecting the chains on this side, but instead of a lobster, I'm adding a 3 inch extender chain just so that it's easy to adjust the length of your final necklace. The end of your necklace will look something like this, and this extender again allows you to adjust the overall length of your entire necklace. So here is our finished piece. Obviously it's a little hard to see when it's laid flat like this, but I will go ahead and put it on the dress form so you can see all of the layers and how they sort of line up. This is a great tutorial again for beginning jewelry makers as well as advanced jewelry makers because you could really make these as simple or as ornate as you like. Um, obviously, if you don't want to spend too much time, don't go with all of like the little beaded links and everything and just do more of the simple chain type looks. Um, you could really whip up a lot of these pretty fast if you just keep the look simple. So again, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you guys make any of these cool pieces, um, you could tag me on Instagram. It's Quiet Line Creations. I'd love to see what you guys make. And if you have any suggestions for more tutorials, more trendy jewelry designs, um, go ahead and leave that in the comments and I'll get to making those videos soon. So thanks again and as always, stay crafty. Bye. Bye.